All right, welcome. Today we're going to make a some sort of like indie folk, some sort of Dylan Gossett, Gossett, Dylan Gossett type of thing. Uh, just like that country folk stuff that's popular nowadays, like that Zach Bryan stuff. So I'm not going to be recording acoustic guitar in this video. I actually already recorded it. Here it is in the session. But if you want to know, it was recorded with an old BC Rich acoustic guitar. It's not even a good sounding guitar. Um, I use an AT4040 uh, right off the bridge and a Lewitt 040 pointing at the 12th fret. So that's it. Uh, we recorded three parts. I recorded an intro, which sounds like this. And then I moved the mic slightly to get a bit of a tighter feel. Um, I, I pretty much just moved them a little more together and made sure the phasers are all correct to get the, the main guitar, uh, which leads a little more space for the vocals. And the left channel is turned down about 7 dB just because I want it to feel a little more to the right. What I've been doing a lot recently is panning stuff, you know, left, instead of left, right, and center, um, I'll pan it like slightly off and not really have too wide of a thing because I want to have contrast. And if you have everything in the width and everything in the mono, then there's not really too much contrast and there's not really much positioning. So uh, for this main track, I just have uh, a left and right, but the left is turned down. So really the guitar sits right here. If I turn the left track up, it sits in the middle. Because it's so tight, it's going to sit like right here in your face, right here in your face. And if I want the vocal to be there too, it's going to collide. If the vocal's here and the guitar's here, it's kind of hard. So right now I have the guitar right here and the vocal will go around here a little more off to the left. And the last track we have is a double, which is just the exact same mic technique, the exact same positioning, just the same, just a different part. Let's check this phase. Ableton 12 has got this beautiful new feature that has never been seen before in any DAW ever, and it's to make the waveforms bigger. Just kidding, it's in every other DAW. Ableton was just very late to the party. And so that all sounds like this. It's a pretty simple guitar sound. Um, there's not a ton of body in it, and I think it does a good job of mimicking the Dylan Gossett sound. Lastly, we have a bass. Uh, the bass was just completely DI'd. It was recorded with a... A jazz bass, it's a, like a jazz bass-esque bass. It's, uh, it's a custom-made jazz bass, but we'll just say it's a jazz bass for now. Uh, and it just sounds like this. So, standard, standard bass. You can even use mo moto bass, like a, a VST bass. Those things do work, I promise you. Uh, I used to think they didn't, but they do if you know how to use them. That's the track we've got so far. I'm going to add a couple more things, and we're going to start mixing. One thing I always add is a roomy electric guitar. I'm going to pick up a Strat, and I'm going to go into, I think I'm going to go into Amplitube, just because Amplitube has a nice roomy, raw sort of feel. Uh, not really polished, so we're, we're going to try that out. And actually, now that I think about it, if you guys are interested in the the way I recorded all this stuff, there's a, there's an Instagram Live on my Instagram if you guys wanted to watch. It's not really the most entertaining thing, but you know, if you wanted to see how I recorded it, it's right there. I think I'm just going to do that. I'm going to use the SRV Clean and Solo. Looks like it's just a tube clean with some... Uh, just a compressor and some EQ and two cabs. I mean, cool. And actually, I want to add some more room in there. Not too... Yeah, I'm gonna add some more room in there. I'm just gonna increase that. Now it sounds like it's recorded in a real room. So I think for this first course, uh, I'm gonna keep it a little more mellow. And on the last course, I'll go a little heavier. Uh, so what I'm gonna do right now is just a, like a lead line, like a. Something like that. Uh, now you'll notice that is in the middle if you're using headphones. So I'm just going to pan it. I'm going check this compression. I'm going to throw a Proceed 2 behind the amp because I want to compress the signal going into it. There we go. And then I'll, I'll throw that, uh, oh, I thought we had a reverb on here. Let's throw a reverb on there. Um, just like a plate, I'm sure it's fine. Um, 
let's do a delay. All right, let's go back into Amplitude. Now I want to do a sort of like a supporting section with the guitar. Uh, so for this, I'll use, I don't know, a tube clean too, I guess. They sounded good. That's fine, yeah. Uh, for this, I want something a little bit smoother. Um, the 421s are really nice, and the R121s are really nice because they're ribbons. Let's hop into here. There we go. Uh, and yeah, instead of a 57, I'm going to go to a 421. And then I'm going to increase the room a little more too. It's a really crazy uh, resonant, resonant tone here. It's that one. I'm going to THU Slate now, and I want to add one more guitar. I don't know really what I want to add, but I feel like I just need another guitar. Texas Blues, single coil, probably going to be a good idea. That'll be nice with a room verb on it. Let's see what we've got so far. Just a regular verb would be nice. I really don't like that high rhythm. I take it back. I deleted it. Um, it just cuts through a lot. I just don't think it fits the part. Um, I'll probably have to add something like it back in this section, in this course. Um, but for now, you know, trial and error. You do stuff. Sometimes it doesn't work. So, E guitar rhythm. And I'm going to put it on the second chorus as well. <laughs> So more guitar. I've got this uh, Californian clean delay. I haven't tried it yet. I think that sounds pretty good. Next, I'm going to try this PT, uh, Sir PT, I guess is what it's called. It's a bit crazy, um, but they do have these great little effects racks that change like impulse responses. That sounds good. Uh, I'm going to throw a yellow drive on it before that. All right, next I'm gonna work quickly on these acoustic guitars. Okay, so I'm gonna group these two guitar layers because they're basically the same thing. They're the same part, they're just mic'd a little differently. Um, and I'm gonna just call this guitar sub. Guitar main sub. And I'm gonna process them the same. So I'm gonna put a bus compressor on there, the townhouse bus compressor. I don't know why, I just really, really love it. And what I'm shooting for here is just evening out the guitars. So I'm gonna go for a somewhat fast attack. Um, I haven't decided on the release yet, but you see when it's jumping, it jumps when there's like a... So I'm just trying to tame those. Yeah. I'm 
gonna throw the VSM3 on there now just for some saturation. All right, listening to it off. And on. Now I want to carve out some space for vocals, um, just in case anyone wants to record on this. So when the guitar is hitting harder around the chorus section, we do have a lot of uh, game reduction going on. So I'm going to keep it on a 2 to 1 ratio. Now I'm going to quickly go into the electric guitar. EQ some of that stuff out on the entire sub. Uh, I'm going to cut a bit of lows. I'm going to do some mid-side stuff. Uh, I'm going to cut out the mids around here just for some vocal space. Yeah. So as opposed to this, which would could lie with the vocals, this adds space to the vocals. Cool. Uh, I want some saturation on there. I'm going to... I'm going to actually try the new... What's it called? It's called the Verve Machines. Yeah, it's a new UAD plugin. I, I do like it. Um, I don't really like that it's kind of just like a uh, put this on your mix and it's magic sort of thing. Like I want to know what... I want more parameters and I want to know how it works and whatever. It does sound good. I'm going to put a fairly clean compressor on here. Uh, what am I looking for? Focus right red. Where is it? Red 3 compressor. It's a clean VCA style uh, compressor. Just to even stuff out. Yeah, something like that. Let's see what else we can add here. Um, I, don't, I don't like... You can hear the, the strings buzzing on the, the neck. My guitar is super, super low action. Uh, so I want to try and get rid of that. Um, and what we could do for that is just a bit of overdrive. Something really, really not crazy. The over scream, I'm not sure if we can get it low gain or low gain enough, low drive enough. Oh, actually, we have a drive here. Cool. Let's turn that off, turn that on. That's better. Cool. All right. Now, lastly for the bass, uh, I'm going to throw on an SVT3 Pro. Um, let's listen. <laughs> they got some nice effect tracks too. What do they got? 409 with the ribbon. 421 with the ribbon. Yeah, that's nice. I'm gonna cut out some uh, some of the second harmonic. Actually, yeah, around there. And then the scoop here. Uh, I'm gonna throw a decapitator on there. There it is. Cool. And then a bit of space uh, is all we need to make it fit right in the mix. I know I've been soloing this whole time and, you know, you don't want a solo mix to a solo. But uh, trust the process. <laughs> 
Yeah. All right, now we'll take this all off and we'll mix. LA two a tube just to even out the signal. And let's try and shoot for three to five dB. <music> Lastly, you're going to check in mono. And actually, big enough bass mono too. Uh, 120, yeah. What I do is I'll check in mono and I'll go to the most complicated, like complex section of the mix with the most amount of layers or whatever and see what's competing with what and see what I can do to remedy it. All right, let's add some reverb. And that's the beat, hope you enjoyed. Um, hope you learned something. Um, if you want these kind of electric guitar layers, I mean, not those exact ones, but I do have a lot of electric guitar layers I like to layer in with my beats to make them more three-dimensional, make them more filled out. If you want to look at those, uh, there's a shop link down in the description. I think there's like eight or ten of them. I can't remember, but I use them a lot of time in all my beats. If you want to use them, check them out. Uh, they really make your mixes feel more filled out. So if you want to check those out, go for it. It's in the description. Anyway, bye.